be on the lookout for this deck because it's got a gun. Yeah, I know. I'm not I'm not proud about this, but I I don't know how to transform this completely. <laughs> the state of the Badlands meta is in a very precarious situation right now because there seems to be a lot of people that are praising the decks that are currently playable at top legend, while a lot of people are thinking that these archetypes are completely uninteractive and are not fun to go up against because you will just die just because the deck is really good. So go ahead and like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel in order to let me know that you are still having fun with Hearthstone even if you are not rank 1 legend just like insane hit with Naga Demon Hunter. According to him, he went 22 and 4 with this list that I'm about to show you. But before I show you the list, why don't I show you what this build is actually Naga capable of? Spell. So this is me Naga playing. Spell. Maybe I'm not going to move the camera. Naga. You can see this spell. on Twitter if you really want to see my reactions, but yeah, how how does uh, how does this uh this lethal look? It's turn 4 by the way. Naga. The good old Naga spell combo. <laughs> with a surplus of six <laughs> extra damage possible by turn four. I still like Naga Mage more than Naga Demon Hunter, but this is the one thing Naga Mage couldn't do. Turn four lethal is possible with Naga Demon Hunter. And I'm not gonna lie, I kinda had the nuts because not only did I have a frequency oscillator I believe already played, but I also had made my uh, my blind eye sharpshooter cost two mana because of the wayward sage. So this deck has a lot of gas to it, and it may look really weird with all of these one ofs, but a lot of the one ofs really do make sense in this deck. So let me go ahead and explain what exactly is going on and whether or not I believe this deck might be warranted for a nerf. So one thing that's very important with this deck is obviously the inclusion of Sigil in Time in order to find your Blight Eye Shark Shooter as soon as possible. Because very similar to Naga Mage, you just want a mulligan for this card. However, since we do have Sigil of Time into the deck, you definitely want a mulligan for this card as well because you just want to play it on turn three, draw through your deck, try to set up the Sharpshooter combo one way or another. But the way that you're usually going to do this is with the one mana Nagas that are available in the deck. And that's the reason why Frequency Oscillate is here because it can turn your mistake into a zero mana naga so that way you're essentially getting two damage and a card draw for zero mana and if you know zero mana interactions in hearthstone you absolutely know that dealing damage is good for zero mana but drawing a card for zero mana that's even way more ridiculous because you also have cards like dispose of evidence momentum and predation that can also be zero mana if you've already played cards with them but the other inclusions on in this deck are cards like bartendo bot this card is pretty much in here not only to give you access access to uh you know sigil runner as well as your spectral site for free but it's mostly in here in order to get your wayward sage so that way you can get it in an outcastable position because discounting cards is super crucial for this deck to work well you can make zero mana nagas zero mana spells you can make your sharpshooter cost two mana which is also possible to stack even more discounts if you play the load the chamber i'm not sure why there are two load the chambers in here but i'm pretty sure it was hard to fit all of these cards here because one glaive tar one one load the chamber one spectral site bartendo bot as well as mistake and oscillator are the are the single cards in here that really do feel like they have a place like finley just helps you find the cards that you're looking for in case you are drawing a lot but not getting exactly what you want and the great thing about shuffling cards with this deck in particular is that you will just draw cards thanks to the blind out sharpshooter to the point where i think i had a game where i drew all of my nagas and most of my spells by turn six turn seven even though i didn't end up killing my opponent that game it was very it was very unsatisfying to draw through the deck and still lose and that's something that i want to bring up is that this deck is not easy to win with like my win rate with this deck right now i believe is four and seven and it's because this deck feels very glass cannony. It's not just the fact that getting your sharpshooter is that important, but there are some situations to where you just don't have all the discounts you need at the right time. And that's why putting cards like Greedy Partner in here is super important because sometimes you do need the zero mana spell as well as the extra mana that this card can essentially give you. So this deck is really about setting up the combo and then hoping that you have enough damage in order to pop off everything. But with zero mana momentum, zero mana uh, dispose of evidence, that's already six plus another eight so that's 14 damage and if you are also getting the damage from the sharpshooter every single time you play a card that can essentially be an extra eight damage on top of that 
So there's already a lot of damage that is possible with this deck. So you want to use the early game turns with like Vicious Slither Spear as well as like your Parched Desperado in order to deal some extra damage so that way you're not just OTKing from 30. Because the thing you always got to remember with this deck is that stats on board are very important. I ended up having a game against a, a Warlock to where they had turn 3 Forge of Wills, turn 4, 4 mana 7-7. Seven, seven. They created 14 uh, extra, uh, you know, HP on the field and I was doing my combo and if they didn't do that i would have won the game but unfortunately my opponent was still stuck at six hp while they had one minion left over at one or two hp something like that so this deck can still deal a lot of damage but extra minions on the field is something you really don't want to see when it comes to this deck so that's why having glaive tar uh, makes sense so that way you can deal damage draw extra cards but having two of these would feel a little bit clunky i still think that load the chamber has possibilities of running uh, two of but honestly i didn't really miss this card when i was playing it i had plenty of other minions and plenty of other ways of dealing damage that really just makes sense but i mean insane is probably the stream that you want to watch if you want to get better at this deck because i can only win so many times but i really do believe the reason why this deck won't get nerfed is because it is a, it's, a, it's a glass cannon there are going to be situations to where you kill your opponent without any trouble by turn four through six while there'll be a ton of other games that'll happen that it's really hard just to get that last bit of damage even if you do do the combo uh, but I think it's up, but I'd like to know what you guys think of this deck. Is it uninteractive? Is it something that you want to see nerfed? Is this a strategy that you can get with because the skill cap of this deck is actually somewhat high? Like, there is a lot of people that do believe that archetypes like this shouldn't exist, but I absolutely love archetypes like this because it lets a good gamer be a good gamer. And we need more Hearthstone decks like that to where it's not necessarily like the most difficult deck to pilot in the world, but it has some difficulties that you have to learn and adjust to in order to really play this deck perfectly. Because I believe that anybody can learn this deck, but you have to understand the thresholds that are possible because one thing that I got asked about on my stream is do you just tempo the blind eye sharpshooter as soon as you can on turn three or do you just save it for the combo you always save this for the combo i don't even think like against like most control decks that maybe won't have an answer you just don't play this on turn three you don't take the risk you just do not do it because this is the card that really puts everything together and honestly it's better to go for the combo miss and then go for a second combo to try and deal that last bit of damage versus just hoping and praying that you play this on turn three and it doesn't die on turn four and there might be ways that you can sometimes get away with it in an absolute perfect situation but I just wouldn't take the risk because this deck does have a lot of damage and you don't need to take that sort of chance when you have this much guaranteed damage possible when this card is in effect. The clips coming up ahead are going to have a couple of games as well as the turn four lethal play so that way you guys can see how exactly we got to that point. But I figured it was important just to showcase the highlight in order to show you the potential of this deck before showing you the actual gameplay in case you guys actually want to learn it now. But feel free to check out the channel. We got plenty of videos that showcase a lot of the decks that I played during the Theorycraft stream. And over the next couple of days, I'm going to be uploading a lot of content showcasing a lot of different decks. Most likely, the next video I'm going to post about is Dragon Druid. So if you guys want to support the content, feel free to check out the Patreon to where you can get shoutouts, uh, deck optimization, as well as coaching that are available. Would love to have you guys be a part of the Patreon and get extra perks and bonuses for supporting the content. But thank you so much for making it to the end of this deck breakdown, and we'll see you for the next video. Now we're gonna learn this deck. No. We're gonna learn this deck, and I, my newbie instincts tell me to keep all these cards, but that is not what I wanna do. I wanna keep Frequency Oscillator because it's technically a setup card, but I feel like it's just way more important to find the Sigil, to find the Sharp Eye. Maybe Load in the Chamber is a card to keep here, because it does set up the two mana card, but I think it's just more important to actually draw the cards we need. So I'm going to go for Sigil, I'm going to go for Sharpshooter, Sigil, okay, Sight on the uh, on the left is pretty good. Every single time I play the Slither Sphere on one, I wonder if this is incorrect. What is the cheapest new deck? Cheapest is in, like, least amount of legendaries? It probably is Elemental Shaman. Probably, but I haven't really run the numbers. Okay, bartender. Oh, wait a minute. Bartender putting the the, sh the the sage to the left is actually really good. Is that the whole reason why it's here? Because there's no other outcast card except for that and spectral sight. Oh, it's also got uh, sigil runners. Alright. Maybe I'm supposed to keep the one mana Nagas because they seem to be that important for cycle reasons. So I have to hold on to this one for sure.
I could just go for security in order to bump up this and deal more damage. Your Shot Sider seems kind of interesting too because I also have this. But this just seems to be better. They will never catch me. Okay, there's the Sharpshooter. Finley being in my hand is kind of awkward. But at the same time, if I go for a combo and I have zero amount of Finley, I have to play this next turn. Hopefully I draw a Naga and I discount. I grow impatient. All right. Yeah, we're playing. We're playing Naga Demon Hunter. This seems to be the best deck of the game, according to people. Clark, can you take a look at the Master Puppets list after this game and tell me what you think? I'm hella invested in that deck. Uh, can you uh, send me a deck code? All right, there we go. One mana Nagas, zero mana spells. Honestly, wait a minute. Was I supposed to play this to get rid of the Finley? Was it ever try for that? I mean, I guess I could do that next turn. But now this isn't discounted. Dude, every single time I play this deck, I feel like I'm not playing things correctly. Like, I have to- you have to know when to pop off the combo here. I don't know if you've run into any, but apparently people are trying to make Excavate secret major thing? No! No, ban those people from the servers. Do not- if secret mage becomes meta, I will not want to play Hearthstone. Please. Please. Either ban objection, or get rid of secret mage entirely. Just get rid of it entirely. I don't think I can handle it. Excavate Secret Mage? No! Tice! Tice, this 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 list is cursed. Running Neptal on the Tide Hunter? Why? Oh, because it's elemental that gets drawn from the Macedon? Okay, sure. By the way, W Taco Bell? Aw, oh, dude, I, I was super happy about that one. I still can't believe that it happened. Okay, so I feel like I have to do this. So Naga. Spell. Naga. Bell. Naga. Spell. Oh my god, wait, that's lethal? Wait a minute, that's lethal? I didn't even th Okay, oh wow. Okay. Uh, shit. Uh, that was exact lethal. Oh my god. Okay, uh, yeah, casual turn six OTK. Casual turn six lethal. In the Naga's defense, <laughs> it is a blind gunner. That's why I just go and, ah, I'm just gonna shoot until I hit things. It'll happen eventually. Keeping Spectral Sight in the left. I'm just gonna go ahead and mulligan everything here. So tired of playing Warlocks. Might just stop until they patch it. It's getting patched soon. We're, we'll hear more news on Friday, which probably means that the, the drop is actually gonna happen on Friday. Okay, we actually start with a sharpshooter in hand now. So this is looking like a very promising game. I will keep the one mana Naga, but I'm going to start with the partner next turn. But having the one mana Naga is very important. It was the first spell I've uh, copied with the card and probably also the last. <laughs> I learned the hard way. Dry Scale Deputy puts a plague in your hand if the, the next spell is a plague. I did, yep, I did not know that. Hot fix on Friday, bad idea. If something breaks, they can't fix it over the weekend. They're not going to be able to fix it over the weekend. Next week is a holiday. So you're going to have to wait another week for any kind of, uh, for any kind of changes. They're just, they're just going to hot fix it. They're not planning on doing anything else. It's better to have the meta develop and then you can hit all of the targets that are possible versus not waiting enough time and then something pops up that is problematic. So it's actually good that they're doing it this way. Can I pop off on turn four? Dude, I can pop off on turn four. Oh my god. Dude, this is gonna be disgusting. Oh my god, this is going to be disgusting. One, two, three, four. I have spot for one more Naga. Naga spell, Naga spell, Naga spell. Literally can just play my hand in order. This is actually the definition of having the nuts. Especially if he, like, runs damage into these. So that way I can just maximize the shooter. Okay, Desperado, sure. Run this into my 2-3. So that way I can run this into here, and then I'm just gonna win. Okay, he's going face. I'm pretty sure this is just lethal, though. Her oh my god, this is the nuts! Naga... 
spell, Naga spell, Naga spell. Nagas. Oh, the <laughs> The third lethal, dude! Alright, alright, maybe, maybe this deck's legit. Maybe, the, maybe this deck's legit. Okay, Finley, you have to get played here, right? This is... Oh my god. Uh, I am just... I am just gonna throw the Finley out turn one. I, I despise this hand. I despise this hand by not having the sharpshooter. Okay, can I can I can I take that back? Can I take that back? Maybe, maybe two games is enough for YouTube. Maybe two games is enough for YouTube. But man, having a three and six record that that is that is not gonna sell people on the archetype. Oh my god, I hate doing this. I don't understand why I don't understand why dry scale deputy is not in this deck. I don't think I I agree with that. Like, Dry Scale Deputies makes so much sense in order to draw, like, extra copies of, like, Momentum. But what probably happens is that you draw more copies of, like, Eldari Studies or, like, Spectral Sight or something. Alright, I don't want him to deal too much damage to me. I can play the fre Frequency Oscillator. I can play the, the, the Runner. Yeah, Busted Naga Demon Hunter goes three goes 31% or 30% with it. I mean, someone else already went hit rank 1 with it. My, my stats don't matter. But at the same time, a lot of people are probably going to look at the corner and be like, Hey, Clark, why'd you go three and six? Uh, because I'm bad. So is it hit or miss? I mean, it, it doesn't feel like it's hit or miss. It just feels like I'm getting unlucky. It really feels like I'm getting unlucky. Like, two of, two of the losses that I had were wins if my opponent didn't discover the actual nuts card in that situation. Like, I could have beaten the Warlock, but they found a taunt that healed them. I could have beaten uh, a Warrior, but they had the Odin on eight. It's like, there's a difference between getting unlucky and it being hit or miss. Because if a deck is a miss, that means that the deck itself is losing to itself. Not not me losing to my opponents having good RNG. Those are two completely different things. Call my warrior deck ex uh, Excavate D's Ox. <laughs> That's a good name. Yes, yeah, who knows? Maybe the streamer's a miss. The deck might be fine. But I'm missing outs. Like, what if I didn't? What like, what if I went for the uh, the six sixes in that last game? I would have had bodies, and then I would have had like things to have them focus on. But I didn't do math. I just assumed I knew the best play. That's the big enemy. Enemy number one is yourself. Rule rule number one, son. Trust nobody. Okay, hold on. We might be able to start the combo here, but at the same time, I don't have a naga. So I guess I have to start with Frequency Oscillator, attack, get some card draw, pop off on turn 7. The question is if he's going to pop off on turn 6. 4k, Mr. Streamer, miss. Bro, I don't even know what my rank is right now. Who, for all I know, I could be rank 4,000. I legitimately haven't played Hearthstone this entire month. Oh, shit. Okay, alright. How, how hard is this about to pop off? You need a lot of value here. And if he doesn't do that much, I can just literally swing the weapon into the Naga. Okay. Is that it? If I top deck a Naga, I can actually get this train rolling. Like, I have the spells. And I've got the coin. Yeah, if I draw a Naga, I have to go for it. I did not draw a Naga. That's pretty good. We draw three cards from this. Alright, since we're going to be at seven mana, we don't need both coins, right? We just need a different Naga, not that one. Oh, dude, why am I so unlucky? Well, I mean, maybe I should have played the Oscillator instead of Hero Powering. In fact, that was 100% the correct play. I should have played Oscillator. And my opponent just literally has this again. I mean, I also have, like, momentums. Like, I legitimately had 10 damage in my hand. Technically, 12. So if I find the other momentum, I could just win it. But I really don't want to have to play Sharpshooter and a Sharpshooter. 
And now I have to worry about like all this damage on the field too. Maybe one of these can survive. How the full-time stuff is going, W Taco Bell. It's going well as of right now. The, bi the biggest thing is that we need to make uh, enough income every month. So until, uh, until after these next two months, I won't really have an update. Because last month, uh, yeah, like October. Okay, no, September and August were like my best months ever. November uh, or October was a little bit lower because I had a lot of traveling I was doing. Uh, but it was still good in terms of like the opportunities we were given. Oh my god, I actually have to do this. As long as I draw into momentum, we win the game. So Naga. Spell. Naga. Then there it is. It's it's not about the it's not about uh, how big your combo is. It's how you use it. 